All right, hello, uh, America and the world. Uh, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Uh, we're doing candidate interviews for 2012 who are independent and third-party candidates that are going to be on the ballot this year. Now, so far exclusively, I've been uh, interviewing um, uh, candidates that are going to the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate um, that are on the ballot. Uh, well, the vast majority is um, like 95%, but... Uh, to, I, I have looked over, you know, some people running for governor and, 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 uh, and other positions. And actually today we have our first interview here with uh, someone who is a uh, candidate for governor of Montana. Um, yeah, I, 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 he's a libertarian and um, he has some real neat positions um, on some issues. Uh, you can visit his website and I'll tell you what that is. It's Ron for Montana, R-O-N-F-O-R-M-O-N-T-A-N-A.com, ronformontana.com. And um, when you get there, it's, you know, a good website, and it has really great picture in the front. I mean, those four mountains, um, sir. Actually, yeah, let me, is, uh, is that, do you know where that picture is? And what gets, got you motivated to run for governor this year, uh, Ron? And uh, have you tried to run before also? Okay. Uh, that picture, I admit, is one I found in a company that was, was printing my material, and they had one, and it met, met real close with the scene we have up around Glacier Park. So um, I decided to go ahead and use that one. Um, as far as running f uh, for office, yes, I have run for office before. I ran for the Mississippi 2nd Congressional House District, which was a federal office back in 96, and I ran for a state um, house seat here in Montana in the 2008-2010 elections. Great, great. And um, you know what, I guess I should just ask you, uh, how do you like, um, so are you from Mississippi and, and, and you've moved to Montana, and how do you like Montana, sir? Oh, I love it. I've been up here since 99, and this is now home. I, I can't see myself going back down south. There's a lot of issues that are really going to be hard to deal with socially down there, and I don't see where the controlling people down in that area really are that keen on trying to fix things as much as it is kind of manipulate the public and hope they flow through. Great. And, and, and by the way, if I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, but if I didn't, it is September uh, 4th um, in the evening. Um, uh, 2012, and our election day this year is um, November 6, 2012, and so um, this, um, these last two months are, you know, kind of get, getting in that final lap, per se, um, and uh, I mean, do you have a feeling like um, this year you probably, uh, have, now have you ever won any of the elections, the two other elections, sir, or? No, I haven't. I knew it from right at 5% in my first run for a house seat up here. On the, low, on the state level, I went from right at 5% to just under 19. It's like 18.9% the last election. And do you think so, I mean, that was a real nice increase. It took a lot of walking the streets, knocking on doors, you know, just really getting out there and hustling it. And the, a lot of people in the area, especially around the central part of the state, know me. It's made it a lot easier kind of getting the word out. Um, utilizing Facebook has been a real awesome tool as far as campaigning, getting involved in discussion groups and everything, pushing the website, and so I'm, I'm really looking forward. I, I think we're really going to have some really nice numbers this year. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I mean, the, I was thinking, um, you, you know, what if um, this year uh, there was a record number of uh, independents and third party candidates elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and all throughout all the different offices. I mean, whether it is, you know, governor or um, attorney general or um, state's house and uh, et cetera, I, I, that would put a shock to the system. That would be, um, you know, uh, we the people showing that we the people have uh, people power. And uh, it sounds like you're part of this wave that I think is going to happen on uh, November 6th. Um, that's, uh, it's not going to be a Republican wave. It's not going to be a Democrat wave. Um, and uh, it's going to be independent and third party wave. And, um, and uh, so wave the Democrats and Republicans goodbye. Yeah, I really think it will. Statistically, the Republicans have about a 30, 31 percent pull on the public that claim to be diehard Republicans. Um, it's about 32, 33 as far as the Democrats. So that leaves the rest of us. That's, you know, we're pushing 
a, a higher percentage wise as far as independents and third parties. And if the independents and third party that are the traditional people that float, you know, decide who goes in the office and who doesn't, would actually stick together on our ideals, on our principles, and vote that way instead of going for what we perceive as the least of two evils. That puts independents and the third party as viable candidates in any election in this country. What are some of the issues that really, really, like, I mean, I'm, I know there's probably so many, you know, but, but, but what are some of the ones where, like, you know, if you had us say them really quickly that 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 really um i, I guess uh got got you motivated uh when we're looking at the job market i think the economy in montana used to be really really strong and now we're ranking down in the bottom three or four states in the country and it's totally ridiculous we have a great agricultural community up here and we have a lot to offer as far as resources the big thing with me that really got me pulled me out of political retirement, so to speak, was um, the aspect that the federal government is grabbing too much control. They're allow we're allowing on the state level to let this happen. We're allowing out-of-state environmental groups to dictate to us what we're going to do. There's over 250 out-of-state um, environmental groups that are controlling you know, whether or not we can mine, whether or not we can drill. And it's like they perceive it as some great evil. While the others, the Republicans, for the most part, is, you know, let's, it's Katie bar the door, let's dig it all up, chop everything down, and don't worry about it. And what we've got to do, and my, what brought me into it, was looking for a sensible common ground where we can take care, we can, we can pull the materials that we need to survive as a society and still take care of our environment and actually make it better. For, that way the future generations actually have something to look forward to. They're not looking at living in filth. We're not looking at destroyed climate, destroyed habitat for wildlife, and things like this. And at the same time, create a massive job base that is just totally unreal. Yeah, you know what? I mean, a lot of people, like, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, we just need a break that, uh, you, you know, that bubble that surrounds people's, um, Outlooks. I mean, let's elect some of these people um, in there. Let's get them in there. Um, y y you know, they'll have a cool job, but they're also going to be able to represent us. Let's um, reward uh, ourselves and, and reward them um, also for putting forth the effort, for putting themselves on the ballot. I mean, these are people that, um, you know, I'm not interviewing, like, uh, people that, um, y y you know, are in, uh, like, hate parties or anything like that. I mean, these are people that... Um, uh, care and uh, and you had uh, I mean what are your thoughts about openness in government transparency uh, I mean really making sure like what would you say to make the people feel like if they elected you that they would have the power uh, through through you one one thing is I, I push real hard that what I'm trying to build here in Montana is a cross-party coalition I'm not trying to just appeal to the diehard libertarians that are going to quote national platform down the, down the line regardless. I'm not uh, looking at just trying to grab the extremes on the um, issues. I'm looking at trying to build a cross party. I'm not only not pulling libertarian support here and independence, I'm also pulling uh, a lot of moderate Republicans, especially those that were pushing for Ron Paul. I'm drawing uh, moderate Democrats into the bunch. I'm even drawing the support of the Green Party up there. So we're trying to build this cross-section of people to work together and let's start using some common sense. Look at the big picture. I hear you. I hear you. I, I mean, that to, to me, that's, um, that is what needs to happen. Um, sorry if you don't like to hear that, but uh, that's the truth. And, um, and so uh, I guess, uh, you know, um, try to think of something better because I think that's the best solution. And uh, so what, I heard that um, on your website, actually, you have a video on it. And, um, and uh, it's it basically, you know, really got the imagination. I mean, I honestly, I was looking at your website with, <laughs> with the mountains and stuff and then hearing that video. And, um, and uh, it seems like, a, a, you know, a time of... Um, you know where we respect the rule of law and uh, we have uh, you, you know c kind of a harmony where it's a win-win situation and um, and, and uh, you, you know we're human again basically uh, I mean what what you were saying on there was um, 
I, you know, you're running as a libertarian, but um, you're going to listen to everybody, and you're going to make sure you listen to everybody. Is that right? Yes, I, I talk to people every day, and I, I really appreciate their views. I, I actually pride them for their input. I encourage people to go to the website and use one of the contact sites to get in touch with me, give me their ideas, give me their views. And if they don't agree with me, I ask them, please let me know. You know, I'm, I'm putting myself in the spot of seeking a public office, and if I can't take my knocks and I can't take the criticism, then I don't need to be serving. And I promote that because that's how I'm going to get a better idea of where the people of this state are wanting to go. And if they're telling me just because I promote something does not mean this is where it's going to be. It's not a dictatorship. It's going to be my way on everything. If the people don't like what I'm proposing, they're telling me something different. And that's where the majority of the people are going. My personal self, that's where I'm going to have to go. I may not agree with it. It's like raising our children. There comes a time to turn them loose and let them, you know, sink or swim. Now, I'm going to constantly try to convince them that my way, I think, you know, why I feel like I do and why I think my way is better, and hopefully I can eventually change them and get them to change and do things in a different manner. But if that doesn't happen, you know, we got two things that happen. It'll work or it won't, and we're back to the drawing board. Yeah, and, and that's sometimes how people refine ideas. Um, I mean, that discussion and debate is healthy. Um, it's also um, somewhat, uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting to, to, to see, you know, trying to work things out like that and, and, and have a real, um, uh, you know, healthy conversation where everyone's communicating and, um, and, and listening and, uh, and, and seeing how you can work it out. Um, I mean, so that's, yeah, that's a good point. And, and that actually would be something that's different because it seems like nowadays, um, like uh, our, our representatives, I mean, there's so many things, um, like I issues where the majority of Americans um, feel one way on something and then the politicians uh, just vote uh, a whole different way. I mean, they keep uh, doing that. They've been doing that for like the last 20 years, and I guess that's how we got to where we're at. Um, I'd right. I, I can give you a prime example on something that happened here in Montana that kind of relates, that relates with that. In Montana, we had a medical marijuana law. Well, due to the population and everything, we could possibly have a, when you run the demographics and what, you know, would be good in one dose or, you know, as, even the tiniest of doses or more, in one form or another, most of us in edible form, so it's more like taking actual medication from a pharmacy. We could have a possible 250,000 patients up here. We had one group went on the on the war wagon because they were having a oh there. We had 20,000 patients, and we had it was done as a voter initiative. Our representatives here in Montana took it upon themselves to overturn a voter passed initiative, which is unconstitutional, but they did that. You know, it should have come back to the people to vote on if they wanted to change it. They've been working on it. They've been given like three sessions to tweak the program to get a better working program. They refused to do it. They had an outright try for a repeal. That didn't work, so they tried a backdoor tactic, which did float. I contacted representatives and senators in our state legislature. I contacted our governor. And gave them the perfect out. And that was to not grab just one little group that's on this little, this little war wagon. Pull people that were patients. Uh, bring in a, a, a couple of doctors. Bring in law enforcement, because that's a concern of theirs. Bring in somebody from human services. Bring in the, the caregivers, the people that were growing this and trying to create the products and dispense it. And then get to just a couple of people off the street and put them together as a group to sit down and talk about this so everybody's concerns were addressed and we could work out a reasonable a reasonable program that would have been clean, there'd have been very little chance of subverting the law and getting around it. And they really would have said I was ignored by every one of them, including that governor. Yeah, that sounds like something a governor should do, um, and, and bring everyone to the table. Um, now, uh, I, if I was at that table, I, I, I would have to say real quick here that, um, that uh, think of it this way. I mean, 
Now, whether you agree with people using it or not is one thing, um, but um, it is true that about half our population has used it, so y right. even if you disagree, you're uh, disagreeing with someone that you're probably related to, and um, being that that many people have tried it, and uh, and so let me ask you this, I, I mean, not, not you, but just as an open-ended question out there in the world, um, I mean, okay, so let's say you disagree with it. What do you think should be the punishment for someone smoking marijuana? Do you think they should go to jail? Now, if you don't, I mean, if you think it's wrong, but you, you think like, no, I don't think they should go to jail for just smoking marijuana um, or eating it or, or whatever, then, then what are you going to do? Then, 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 you know, then it's got to be just an education thing if, if, if you disagree with it. And, um, and there's no sense of even go going any further with this debate. Um, it, it's, it's either, um, you, you know, they're going to go to jail for it and uh, possibly to some private prisons or whatever, and, and, and then, um, or they're not. And, um, and so if they're, it's one of those unenforceable laws. It's kind of like prostitution. I don't agree with it. I think it's a bad thing. But you know what? Um, you can't enforce that, and is that something, if it's, uh, you, you know, free between now if it's you know forcing someone to then then that's um a whole different story and that should uh you know i think probably get the death penalty but it, it's um but th that is, is a, a whole different so, so that's just one way of looking at it. another thing is um industrial hemp i mean there is one or two states i think oregon might be one and another state where they actually allow industrial hemp to be grown um and you know do you think that could create some jobs in montana because it's illegal um even though it doesn't you know, have any of those drug effects whatsoever. It doesn't have the active um, ingredients right. that get people high. All it is is an industrial plant. In fact, if you're going to genetically modify the perfect industrial plants, this that would be, be the one. one. <laughs> yeah, um, on, the, on the marijuana issue in general, I actually support going ahead and legalizing it. Uh, it's like a lot of things. I may not agree with uh, certain issues that people have, but we can't legislate morality. That's a, that's a is, personal issue thing based upon the belief system that person has. And everybody in this country, we've got so many different belief systems that there's no way we can come in and outlaw certain things it's such so as morality or like alcohol. It's just, it's just absurd. I don't have the authority to tell somebody what they can or cannot ingest into their system. Now, uh, Certain things like uh, marijuana, you're talking about a plant that does have some um, effect on how we view things, how we, we behave. Most people get real mellow, real mild, nonviolent. It's not like alcohol where you're going to be running stop signs and stuff. Most people, if they're smoking a little bit, they're going to be more likely to sit and look at a stop sign and wait for it to turn green while they giggle. You know, so then as far as a public safety issue, that isn't the case. Now, if for some reason somebody's using and they become a public safety issue, it should be treated the same way as alcohol is when you become a public safety issue. That person should be prosecuted. Right, right. It's feeding the little children. I disagree with that. They should not be right. pushing for little kids to be, you know, trying, trying this. So I would have, I would look for some sort of punishment to most people like that. As far as jailing people just for using it, you know, our prisons are taken up, and it's bankrupting this country to put nonviolent users or um, small-time possessors in office, I mean, in, in jail, excuse me, and this is, this is totally absurd, we can cut, well, we are putting some of them in office, but like Barack Obama and George Bush and Clinton, oh, yeah, this is true too, yes, um, but the made up our jails for this, it, it's, it's really absurd, and it's ripping, you know, a lot of people are claiming they want to do this and do that because of family values, while they're ripping families apart, because somebody got caught with a half ounce, you know, this, this is totally crazy. You know, if we're going to talk about let's protect, well, let's protect, but we can't protect everybody in this country from themselves. On the industrial hemp, I push that real strong. That is one of my key points on boosting the agriculture here, boosting the job market, and boosting the economy. In Montana, we passed the law, industrial hemp is legal to grow. Yeah. Now, they've got insane ways to do it. You have to pass a FBI thing print and background check, and it's $150 a year for the license. And, uh, come on, we don't charge our corn farmers or our bean farmers to grow their crop. We shouldn't be charging $150 a year to grow hemp. But because they 
tag it the same as marijuana, they got to put you through all this, this um, little hoop thing. In Montana, with the records by the state show, farms over 50 acres or more in, in their statistics, they, with the acres those people have, if we took 1% of that land, that farmland, which on any given year we probably got 20, 20 I've seen the land laying idle, doing nothing, growing grass and cutting it and letting it go. On one percent of the register on the farmland in this state for people over fifty acres or more, we could generate three hundred million dollars a year in new revenue being brought into this state. That's a lot of jobs, that's a lot of money to be spent at the retail level. The only reason people don't do it is the the threat from the feds, because the feds want to come in and they declare it the same as marijuana and they'll come in and raid the fields. What I keep trying to tell people, let's get this going. Let's start growing the stuff. Let's build up some processing plants and you do the finish. You know what finish. you could do to make it work is put it under a corporation that's, and we all know corporations aren't accountable for anything, so if they do raid it, it's like you can make a public corporation that, that, that tests like whether they raid it or not, and um, and then if they do, I guess that you just dissolve that corporation or whatever. I mean, well, it, that, that's just a thought. That might not be a practical thing, but um, yeah, I, I'd say the same thing. I mean, just, I mean, that's, eventually, what if all the states did it? Then how could the federal government, um, uh, you, you know, stop them, and um, so... They wouldn't be able to, and that's the glory of it. The, um, the federal government is way out of bounds on that. That was done to control the, the timber market, the paper market, and, and the pharmaceutical market, the chemicals. That's why hemp is illegal now. Our Constitution was written on hemp paper. Most of rope that's ever been, that was made in this country up until the turn of the last century was made from hemp. The material, the original Levi's were all made from hemp material. The U.S. is the number one the user of hemp products on the II. planet. Yeah, the silk parachutes in World War II also were, I believe. Right. Um, and, uh, and Henry Ford's um, car was, even the shell of it, um, the outside of it, the frame was. It was one of the first, like... Uh, Plastic cars, and also the uh, his the engine was meant to run on um, uh, ethanol. Yeah, made from, from, mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, uh, and uh, heptane, I think it was called, or something like that. And uh, right. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Of have gone back to that now. They got a car that they've designed. The components of this car is made from the fiber of hemp. It's stronger than steel. And it's lighter than fiberglass. This, the vehicle has a totally electric engine in it, and it'll, it'll run down the highway at 80 miles an hour. I mean, it's, it's, they're not digging, they're not mining, they're not putting up a lot of time to process the steel and all this. It's a win-win situation. It's a win for the consumer, it's a win for the environment, it's a win for business. You know, there's no sense why we are not pursuing this. I tell the people here, if they will grow the stuff, put me in office. Let's get these fields planted. Let me worry about the Fed. Yeah, yeah, ex that's awesome. And uh, it is now that I thought of something just randomly while you said driving 85 miles per hour. I know there's one state in the country where you, there is no speed limits. I, isn't it Montana? Is Montana the place that has no speed limits, or am I wrong about that? It used to be up until the summer of '99. <laughs> it was it, the law stated open and prudent speed or self improvement speed. You know, if the weather was bad and you couldn't travel that fast, you drove slower. If the weather was good, your vehicle was in good condition, that would go at that speed, you could control it, it was open-ended speed limit. But they did finally shut down on that, on this in the summer of 99. Yeah, all right, well, that's good information. I'm, like, I know in Europe, in some places, they're, they're um, designing places with more roundabouts and, and, and just getting rid of uh, traffic lights altogether, and they found it to work in some places. Um, it just... Uh, you, you know, and actually it was more free-flowing. Um, yeah, that sounds like an exciting, um, uh, y y you know, agenda here. And, I mean, so I, I think that's invigorating. I think that's better than what we have now. Um, and I think uh, eventually people are just going to realize that, like, if they're just all of a sudden, like, let's pretend they're at the beach and, and they're sitting in one place and they keep kept on getting stung and there's flies flying all around them and just bad stuff keeps happening. And then there's this other section there where they can just easily get up and walk and, go over there and it's all like uh, nice and the sand's all nice and, and just the air's more fresh there and, and everything like that. Why, why not just uh, 
uh, get up and, and, and choose that, you know. Um, and, uh, well, uh, Ryan, it's been great talking with you. Is there any issues that I haven't, um, you, you know, brought up that, that, that you would like to bring up, sir? One thing I'm looking at that I push is our ballot access. We see that every, every election cycle where candidates are being trying to be thrown off the ballots. The major parties are trying to look for every little loophole to keep them off. We're having that in the presidential race right now with Gary Johnson's concern. There are states where they're trying to get him off the ballot. And if you're a member of a rec what the government considers a recognized party, you should have access to the ballot. I don't care what state you're in. I mean, whether it's a state level or a national level. If you're not a member of a national, of what they consider a recognized party, the worst thing you got is collecting the signatures to be able to qualify. It's, you know, a certain percentage of the signatures to get on. There should be no issue. It should not be this constant scene that we have going on. It's a constant drain of resources like the libertarians are faced with to keep us off the ballot because we're still having to fight ballot access. Another thing I would like to see, and I've, I've proposed it up here, and I've kind of put my knocks for it, is to print primary ballots just like you would the general election. Because a lot of people, they know a Republican that they think would be good in one office, and a Democrat in another office they would like, and then an Independent or a Libertarian. When they go to the primaries, they should be able to vote for those people and not have to declare, I'm voting Republican, I'm voting Democrat. A lot of people even get to the polls and don't realize there's other candidates running until they get their general election ballot and then they're lost because they have not, especially if you're drained on, drained on phones and you don't get around to the whole state. We, I've seen that happen. Another thing I'd like to see done, if possible, and this really has stirred a ruckus, is like here in Montana we have 100 house districts within the state. It breaks the state back down to 20 house districts. We have the Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, the Greens, and the Independents that are all recognized and have each district vote in one member from all five parties, all five groups, including Independents, Greens, and Libertarians, to serve that district. What that does, you still we still end up with 100 legislators, but there's 20 of each group. That way it forces us to sit down at the table and talk things out, work out things to where the people come out ahead, the state comes out ahead, and we actually make progress instead of letting a group of that consists of 30% of the population and maybe half of them might actually go vote. So we end up with, like in this last cycle up here, we had the Republicans controlling controlling things in the, in the um, House on 15% of the populate, popular vote. That, that can, we can keep going that route. We need to break something down and do things in a more sensible manner to be able to approach this subject and let people be heard. I don't care what group they're from. Yeah, that sounds like basic uh, common sense democracy. Um, that's uh, a, kind of a return to normal, but um, but 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 now and, and, and beyond. Um, let me ask you this also. Um, is there any, um, what's some of your favorite uh, people, um, you know, whether now or in the past or, or who knows, maybe even in the future? Um, I, it, it's, uh, and, and why, sir? Well, I, I like Gary Johnson and Ron Powell. We're, we're a lot alike. There's a few things we might vary a little bit on issues. Uh, my big thing is what I vary with them to would be the going in and instantly slashing budgets. It's taking us too long to get where we are. We can't cure things overnight by an instant slash. It's something we're going to have to work our way out, build the economy up, pull tax rates back down, and get spending under control, put our spending under a microscope. The transparency. I'd like to see state and federal governments operate on a checkbook basis. If Put it online. If you go in and look, you'll see how much, say, Health and Human Services is st spending on stick pens. We can see how many the public can see. We bought ten stick pens at this price. Well, if we can go to the dollar store and get it cheaper, we need to be shopping at the dollar store instead of contracting out just because we're trying to abide by some contractual obligation where most of the time we get stuck. Um, I like Jeff um, Jackson, I mean Jefferson, excuse me. Jeff is one of my heroes. He's just, you know, plain, he's, he's out there. To some people, he's controversial, but I like the way he stood. 
And those to me would probably be my my biggest people that I look for, I look up to and really hold, um, admire as far as their way they did things. Other people in history, there's been a few that, you know, kind of maybe this one more than another for one reason or another, but there, as far as just really being able to say this is who I would, you know, if I could be like somebody, this is who it would be, it would probably want be one of those three. Well, that's really uh, insightful, and um, Ron, um, thanks so much for your time. It's ronformontana.com, and um, so Ron, fan uh, defender, and um, and also um, I guess the running mates uh, is Mark um uh, okay. Okay. And uh, well, excellent. Um, well, sir, uh, good speaking with you today, and I wish you the best of success in your campaign, and and, and that everyone gets to debate it out, and and and, uh, and people um, are fully informed, um, so they can make uh, the the best decisions that they can. And um, I'll say goodbye to you uh, after this interview, and and thank you uh, once again, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.